everybody, this is Sheets. Happy Memorial Day. And what I'm going to be doing is a preview of both the afternoon slate and the evening slate. I'm going to break them up into two, um, into two, uh, two parts of the video. And then I'm probably going to go live as well, but I might not. So in case I don't, um, this is going to replace both of them. Um, now, as usual, I like to take kind of a, a top-down approach to the slate rather than going game by game. Um, I've already done all the work, so I'm going to just kind of break down my, my view of the slate given, given everything that I've done. Now, again, this is based in, in part on, um, on, uh, on my sheets, which I compiled, and on my instinct and my analysis and all this stuff. Um, so in the early slate, you, the, the main thing is that you have Miami at Colorado. So, so whenever there's a Coors slate, you'll get the, uh, you know, you'll get the road team as being project, you know, pretty well projected. And, and today is no, uh, is no uh, exception. I mean, Miami's projecting to be, if not the top, one of the top three, at least for me, uh, stacks on the overall slate. Um, but let's go back to pitching for a minute. So, so you'll see, you know, it's very rare. You have the, the top salary pitcher being at Colorado being Pablo Lopez and, and, and no, I'm not going to be getting to Pablo Lopez. What I am getting is one real standout pitcher here. And it's not Dylan Bundy. Uh, the, the standout that I'm actually getting is, is Valdez. Um, I have him rated significantly higher than, almost everybody when it comes to, you know, my sheets value score ranking. Um, th then I have just a whole bunch of pitchers that could compete for that second spot being either, you know, Dylan Bundy, as I mentioned, Logan Webb. Um, those are the two kind of obvious choices, but then even, even so you could go down to almost anybody else here, you know, uh, Blackburn is, I guess, okay. I'm getting to a great amount of this Ethan Small, who is a 4K pitcher from Milwaukee. And if you do even a little bit of, of digging, I mean, he's got big numbers at, at AAA, um, you know, 1.88 ERA or 1.13 whip and, a, you know, 1. What, 1. 1.2 strikeouts per, you know, per inning. Um, so this is a 4K. I, mean, I imagine he's going to be somewhat chalky, but right now I don't see it that way. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes, but that, that's, that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting SP two way to go here. Um, so for me, I'm probably going to lock in Valdez and then spread out the rest of the pitch. And, and again, that would include Dylan Bundy. It would include Logan Webb. It would probably include a little piece of everybody. The only thing about the Ethan small play, which is going to make me not want to play them is I don't know if I need to, you know, because I don't believe that the hitting requires such an expenditure where I would need to save all this money in pitching. So I, I, you might just end up having to go just the highest projected guys and not worry too much about value. And, and instead of going to Ethan small, going to maybe, you know, like I said, Logan Webb or, or Dylan Bundy or something like that, because you might not even need the money uh, in the first place. So that's that's my approach to this early slate. I'm going to be going with the with the Valdez, and then probably spread out the pitching. What I am going to probably be doing is is limiting the um, the stacks I have exposure to. So I'm just going to just go through, um, you know, the way I have them ranked and who I'm going to end up probably probably going with. As I mentioned earlier, um, I, I think that Miami is rating, you know to be the, the top stat, you know, they're, they're at Colorado and that's, and they're not priced up really. So um, I, I certainly have no problem with that. I do see them getting a good amount of ownership though. So that's something to consider. And, and then the next one I want to talk about is, is are the brewers and the brewers are what I have is kind of the, what I call the, the, the first logical pivot. Okay. I think that if people are not going to play Miami, uh, Milwaukee's projecting really strongly. So I think that Milwaukee is, is clearly the, the, the next option. But the thing is, is that people are not, not dumb, right? So, so 
I think that a lot of people are going to do this and, and go to Milwaukee as kind of the first natural pivot. So while, yes, I do agree that Miami and then Milwaukee are the two best stacks, I think what you want to look for maybe is kind of what I like to call the pivot off the pivot, right? So, so you know, especially if you're going to play Valdez, who I think is going to be pretty chalky, um, you want to play something different. So you could play Miami, which certainly makes sense, um, you know, as far as just you know, being able to get the, the best score. But again, that's not what this is all about. And certainly Milwaukee makes sense as a pretty good pivot. But I'm going to try to find a little, something a little different. And the two teams that I identify that rate close enough to these others that are just not going to be owned as much is one that's going to be the Twins. Um, and the second one is going to be the, um, I was about to say the Niners. Uh, yeah. Well, the two others is, is San Francisco and then Houston. Okay. So, so I think those are the, the, the natural pivots off the pivot. So look, if you want to play Miami, totally fine, you know, but I wouldn't play Valdez in something chalky, you know, uh, but if you want to play Milwaukee, totally fine, but same caveat. But if you want to get somewhat different off of those two, um, I would I would take a shot at any of those other three I mentioned. That would be Minnesota, that would be Houston, and that would be San Francisco. Um, obviously, make sure you get the right lineup for San Francisco as it does tend to, to change, whatever. Um, but that's that's what I feel about this early slate. Um, so I'm going to make it somewhat short so that I can get this up there. Um, um, but again, summarize, I like Valdez and then basically spread out your pitchers and then hitting, uh, I like, uh, I'll just cut right to it. I, I like, I like Houston, um, Minnesota, San Francisco. And then again, the chalkier versions are Milwaukee and, uh, and Miami. So, uh, that's pretty much it for the early slate. I'm not, I'm not going to get into this, this very early two game, uh, fan duel. I, I can't, I can't even. I, I can't even keep pace with the different FanDuel slates. So unfortunately for the early slate, I'm really just going to just stick with the uh, DraftKings. Um, so I'm going to pause for a second and uh, then we're going to um, go to the, uh, to the main slate. Okay, so with the main slate today, um, I have things a little bit different. I actually do have two standout pitchers that I kind of want to lock in here. And instead of just, you know, spreading out the pitchers like I did in the early slate, I think I want to lock in the two pitchers and then kind of just take a couple of different hitting options. Okay. Um, and this is going to be is no great, you know, differentiator, but I do like uh, Gallon and, uh, and Bueller. Okay. Um, you can make cases that some of them, that both of them had kind of you know, shaky performances of late, but it doesn't matter. I mean, on, on this slate, I think these two are just clearly the best. And I, I would do my best to just lock these guys in. Um, other options next would be Ashby, if he gets the start in game two, Milwaukee, Peterson for the Mets, maybe Otto for Texas as a pay down. But for me, it's just, it's really just going to be these two guys. Um, so, and I am going to do FanDuel for this slate as well. So with respect to, to, to hitting on the, uh, what you call it, on the main slate, it's pretty close. So, so there are a couple of things you can do. So the, the, the three teams that, for me, rate the highest, and that would be uh, the Dodgers, um, big surprise. It would be the Red Sox, once again, big surprise. And then Milwaukee, again, uh, which probably is no surprise. So these are the three that kind of rate the highest as far as points go. But but because we're paying up for pitching, it's not exactly that easy to get to all of them. But you are going to be able to get to the Milwaukee's. So, so the Milwaukee's are probably going to be pretty highly owned, I would imagine, especially in this kind of construction. So what we're looking for is, is kind of, ways to get off of Milwaukee, LA, and Boston um, to make these pitching combinations work. So that's when I kind of look at the other way as I rank these, the, the, these stacks here. So 
listen, there are a couple of things you could do. You could, you could try to just go for the lower owned Dodgers, the lower owned Red Sox, the lower owned Milwaukee's play guys at the bottom of the lineup. And that certainly does make a lot of sense. Um, but I prefer to try to take shots at a different team. So the, the, the first one that I want to highlight uh, that fits this, this, uh, this build is Baltimore um, uh, against Rich Hill. Um, they rate as a pretty good value and they, they look to have pretty tame ownership. So I think Baltimore probably is going to be one of my tops. Yeah. My top two. I, mean, I, I got two that I want to highlight. here. Um, so the first one is going to be Baltimore. And the second team that I want to highlight in the main slate, at least for now is going to be the Mets. Um, I, I don't see a world where these guys are as unpopular as I'm seeing them. Um, you know what I think it is? I think because the guys I'm looking at are the non-popular ones. Um, like if you don't want to play Lindor, Alonzo, or whatever. Um, um, but if these guys really, if the Mets against Fetty are really going to be low owned, I mean, I'll, I'll pay for all this stuff. You know, let, let's take a look at the pricing here. What's what's the issue here? Just because Alonzo is fifty three hundred, but you don't have to. I mean, some of these guys are cheap. You could play Alonzo, you could play Guillaume, uh, Kanha, Smith, Marte. Let's see, what's Marte? Marte Mar Marte's expensive, so he's going to be tough. But you could play Kanha thirty one hundred. Um, I think Lindor is probably over 5k at this point. He's 5,500. So I guess that's what's making it hard is that, um, is that these guys are somewhat pricey. Um, but I'd probably try to way to try to find a way to play them. If Don, Dominic Smith gets in at first base instead of Alonzo, that could, that could be a good way to, to get Mets in. And then you could play something like Lindor and make all this work. So, that, that's that's what I'm looking at in, in the in the main slate. For me, it looks like Gallon and Bueller. And then look, the best plays, Milwaukee, um, the Dodgers and the Red Sox. But what I'm gonna try to do is is probably identify two teams aside from that to, to highlight, and that would be Baltimore and the Mets. Um, so even though it's two slates, I was able to bang this out pretty quickly. Um, if I can go live, I will, I doubt it. Um, but hopefully that'll at least give you some kind of, of roadmap.